Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Dr. Denise Otero Espinal. I am the Assistant Director of Clinical Pathology at Lenox Hill Hospital. Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine on Highline and Mucoralis Mold. Today's objectives are to name methods for mold identification in the laboratory and to describe the characteristics of the most common highline and mucoralis mold isolated in the clinical laboratory. Molds can be identified in the clinical laboratory using different approaches, such as direct visualization of the organisms in slide preparations. In the microbiology laboratory, this is done taking a small drop or piece of the specimen and staining it before setting the fungal cultures. The specimen is then stained with calcul floor wipe source and stain, as you can see in image one. This method is fast to perform. Most structures are easily visualized, but it's not very specific. Direct visualization by histology examination can be very useful for detection of mold in tissue, especially if no sample was sent to the microbiology laboratory. Hematoxylin and eosin stain is the primary stain used as seen in image two, but periodic acid chef or PSA and methamine silver stain, GMS, are commonly used to aid visualizing focal structure better. Histology slides are relatively slower to prepare than other methods. They lack specificity and caution has to be taken since the patients or lack of thereof are not always clear. Cultures or molecular identification from the paraffin block are still needed for the final identification of the organism. Culture-based identification is still commonly performed. The molds are identified using colony morphology, color, shape, texture, and microscopic morphology evaluation with things like lactophenol cotton blue, as shown in the picture. Selection of the media for culture is important. Non-selective to recover all clinically significant molds with antibiotic for samples that are non-sterile and with cyclohexamide to inhibit saprophytic molds. Care must be taken using media with cyclohexamide since the growth of medically important molds can be inhibited and media without it should be set at the same time. Multitof MS technology can be used for final identification of the commonly isolated molds, but is not yet widely used. DNA sequencing is the most accurate identification technique when using isolated fungi from culture. Band sequencing can also be performed on patient samples. Multiple targets are used. The most common is the internal transcribed spacer, ITS region in the ribosome. Sequencing is highly accurate, but requires a specialized laboratory and is not widely available in the clinical setting. Highlight molds are distinguished by the colony morphology and rapid growth rate. Microscopically, they have thin, colorless, regularly septic hyphae with acute angle branching as seen in this image. Some of the species in these categories include Aspergillus species, Fusarium species, and Ketosporium species, which are indistinguishable by histology examination. In the next slides, I will describe clinically relevant highlight molds commonly seen in the microbiology laboratory in more detail. Several species form part of the Aspergillus fumigatus complex, with Aspergillus fumigatus as the major human pathogen within the complex. Aspergillus fumigatus is the main cause of invasive aspergillosis, allergic aspergillosis, and fungal sinusitis. It grows fast, forming blue-green to gray colonies that have white borders, as seen of image one. The reverse is white to tan. Microscopically, the conidiophore ends with a dome or a flask-shaped vesicle with uniseriate Fialides covering two thirds of the vesicle, as pointed out by the arrows in image two. Aspergillus flavus is part of a complex and is the second most common cause of invasive aspergillosis. Aspergillus flavus is a major producer of aflatoxin. 
It grows fast, forming bright yellow green colonies, as you can see in image one, and yellow is on reverse. Microscopically, it has a rough or spiny coniliophore that is hard to see sometime in image two. The vesicle is globose and completely covered by uniserate or biserate gallides. Aspergillus niger is part also of a complex. It can cause aspergilloma or fungus wool and otitis externa. It forms white, fast growing colonies that darken as they age, as you can see here in image one. The colony reverse is white, which helps differentiate it from the matiaceous mold, which have a dark reverse. Microscopically, it has a smooth conidia form with a globus vesicle with biseriate fialides and brown conidia, as you can see here in image number two. Aspergillus teres, also part of a complex, can cause disseminated disease in immunocompromised and is intrinsically resistant to amphotericin B. The colonies are fast growing, cinnamon brown, and yellow on reverse. Microscopically, the upper half of the dome shaped vesicle has biseriate fialides as point with the arrow. Penicillium species are considered to be contaminants. Thalaromyces marnefii, formerly Penicillium marnefi, was considered the only pathogen in this group. It is a thermally dimorphic fungi that causes invasive mycosis in immunocompromised in the endemic areas. Penicillium species form fast growing powdery blue green colonies. Microscopically, it has branch and unbranched conidia forms with cluster of fialides topped with round conidia in chains. Next, Pressilomyces vicis is considered a contaminant, but it can also cause keratitis. Pressilomyces species form fast growing, flat, yellow brown colonies. Microscopically, shows branch conidia forms with cluster of fialides with delicate tapering ends and oval conidian change. Penicillo and Pesilomyces are very similar microscopically, but Pesilomyces, which is a pathogen, has long tapering fialides and oval conidia in comparison with the blunt fialides and round conidia from Penicillium. The colony color is also a key distinguished feature since Pesilomyces do not form blue green colonies, which are common for Penicillium. Two siren species can cause a wide array of infections from nail infection to disseminated disease, mostly in immunocompromised patients. It forms sparse growing woolly colonies that can range from white or cream to pink or purple, with light or deep color reverse. Micro and macro conidia can be seen microscopically. Fialides produce one to two cell microconidia, and the macroconidia are curved or banana or sickle shaped. Septate and usually in clusters as seen in this image. Acrimonium species can cause white green mycetoma, keratitis, and nail infection. Macroscopically, it can be confused with fusarium due to the pink to white woolly colonies, but it grows at a slower rate. Microscopically, it has narrow high feet and the conidia form clusters at the end of narrow, delicate fialides, as pointed by the red arrow. Mucromycosis is caused by fungi from the mucoralis order, such as rhizopus species, mucor species, leishtemia, previously known as absidia, rhizomucor, and apophysomyces species, and other molds rarely seen. Zygomycetes, as an obsolete term, and it shouldn't be used anymore. This fungi can cause rhinocerebral, pulmonary, cutaneous, and systemic invasive disease, especially in patients with diabetes, iron overload, immune suppress, as in solid organ or stem cell transplant, and hematological malignancies. Mucoralis are characterized by rapidly growing mycelium and septate ribbon-like or broad-based hyphae. Wide angle branching is usually seen in histology slide. Rhizopus species is the most common cause of mucormycosis. It forms wide colony, fast growing colonies that darken 
with age, and the reverse is white to pale gray or brown. Microscopically, it is characterized by having rhizoids or root-like structures pointed by the red arrow. The sporangiophore are mostly brown, non-branched, and directly connect to the rhizoid. The sporangia are multispore, spherical, and the conidia can be brown. Mucor species is a less common cause of mucomycosis. It forms white, yellow to gray, colony fast-growing colonies that darken with age as seen in image one. The reverse is white, and microscopically, the sporangiophore are mostly highline, multispore, spherical sporangia can be seen as pointed out by the red arrow in image two. But it lacks rhizoids, as we can see in the red arrow. Other mucoralis needs to be excluded to reach this diagnosis. Here are some of the differential characteristics between Leishtinia rhizomucor and Apophysomyces. Apophysomyces have unbranched gray brown sporangiophore with a bell shaped apophysis. The columella is dome shaped and the sporangia pyriform. Lustania has similar columella and the sporangia, but the sporangiophores are branched and highline, terminating in a conical apophysis. Lustania have primitive or indistinct rhizoids. Rhizomucor has branched brown sporangiophores with global sporangia. Rhizomucor rhizoids can be at the base of the sporangiophores or in between. Leuchthemia and apophysomyces sporangiophores arrive from the stolon, but the later have septation between the sporangiophore and the rhizomes. Thank you for joining me on this pair of laboratory medicine on highline and mucoralis mold. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.